We're here in Knisno, Saskatchewan, and we are at Knisno Public School. And I'm Mr. Larson, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, air tools, and the technology in air tools has really come a long ways from even when I was in school. Uh, things like sanders and drills, anything pretty much that you can buy that was typically electric power or battery power can now be also purchased and used with air power. So it's kind of a neat alternative. Um, so here's a quick example of a sander that you could get and just hook it up and, and okay. sands. Kind of cool. Um, another neat thing here would be an impact and these have been around for quite a while that you would use for say changing um, your tires. An air ratchet also for tightening loosening nuts and bolts and then we get into more of what we're going to deal with which is using air nailers and blow guns to blow the dust off of our projects. So really quickly when we're talking about air power um, we have an air compressor, so that blue tank in the corner. We have that air compressor that um, builds up pressure inside of a tank, and that, that pressure is very useful, but it also can be potentially dangerous. So first thing first, PPE, we need to make sure that we have safety glasses or some sort of eye protection that's quite, quite good, quite fitting to the face, so that um, no debris, no fasteners, nothing can, can penetrate and get into your eyes. Um, if you're sanding, and really it depends on what the process is, which air tool you're using, but uh, you could wear a um, dust mask or something like that. For our purposes, just make sure you got those PPP and get your safety glasses on. Okay, all right, so uh, next up, we're going to talk about then our fasteners. So the fasteners we're going to use are these Primarily, this is the one that you'll use the most, which is a brad nailer, so brad air nails. And these nails, I'll just show you some here. So these nails, quite thin, they have a T shape to them, so they do have a head on them. Um, and, but they're really, they're not meant for uh, structural purposes. So if you can see that, I've got like five nails right there. And even with five nails joined together, I can bend that really quite simple. Um, so these we wouldn't want to use to hold up some sort of project. What we typically will use them for is just temporary nailing, so to hold something in place, or we're gonna use it to act as a clamp, to hold the, the project or whatever it is we're fastening in place while the glue dries, okay? All right, so next up we have the brad nailer then these are 18 gauge brad nailers and it does matter which fastener you put into which type of gun so you got to know what is what are the, the fasteners that go in this so these are they come in different lengths this is a two inch it goes up to two inch you release that well i can tell i'm already out of nails because there's usually some indicator like a red spot and you push this little spring-loaded thing down and it opens up the clip slide your nails in as far forward as possible and with the head of the nail towards the trigger. So I like to tell kids that there's a firing pin inside of here, that the air is built up, you squeeze the trigger, it releases that air pressure, and then that air pressure pushes this pin inside that fires it forward. And that shoves the nail into the wood. So um, try to think of it as if this is the hammer that pin is the hammer and that's that's the side then you wouldn't want to hit on the pointy side of the nail. You want to hit on the head of it. Okay, now that we have it loaded with fasteners, what we're going to do next is we're going to connect it. And a lot of times people, a lot of students have a hard time getting this connected, especially in grade seven and younger ages. The trick that I always tell them is that you want to make sure that you're reaching up with your thumb and your index finger, your pointer finger. So you're going to reach up high and pull that back. So this is the the, um, the chuck for it. You see that there's little ball bearings in there. And when I pull that back, it allows those balls to slide out, allowing the other end of the chuck to 
fit into there. And then, then they'll sit in that little groove. So we pull that back, shove that on, and push that collar up and it's attached. If it's not popping off, you can't pull it off, it's attached. Now that it's got air to it, we need to make sure that we're not pointing it at anybody. It's a good habit to get into that you don't do that at any time. If you try not to point it in any direction, even if the air is not connected. Because nowadays you can buy cordless nailers that are battery operated and you just want to break yourself of those bad habits. So next up then, we're going to lay it down sideways and not pointing at anybody. When you are connecting it, I did do it, but I forgot to mention that you want to make sure that you're pointing it downwards, not at in the direction that somebody might be standing. Um, if it did happen to misfire, I would rather have it hit my feet than to have it hit anywhere else. Okay, so pointing it down. Whenever you're connecting, disconnect. Next, we're going to try to fasten these two together. We're going to pretend that we put a thin layer of glue across that surface and we're ready to fasten these together as a butt joint. Now, this would not be very safe for us to try to fasten that together. Why? Because it's kind of tippy and wobbly. If that nail, as I'm nailing, if this slips, it could shoot a nail out sideways at us. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are using some sort of a, a fastening or holding system, but not somebody else. Don't get somebody else to volunteer to hold it for you, unless it's a really big piece where they can have their hands far away and it's nice and sturdy. Okay, so now we've got our, our block of wood there. I have one hand to hold it. On the other hand now, I can line it up. There is a safety on these, so this right here, this will, when that's pushed in all the way, then it will fire. Right now, and please don't do this, but just for demonstration, if I squeeze the trigger, nothing's happening. Not until that's pushed in, okay? So we're gonna push down all the way. We're going to make sure it's lined up, that we're not angling it one way or another, because that will cause it to come out sideways. I want it to be nice and lined up. Push down all the way, squeeze the trigger and release. And when we're done, lift it up, line it up again, squeeze the trigger, and release. When you're done, you're then going to disconnect with the pointing down at your toes, and set it to the side. So, similar thing would be this right here. This is actually a Brad Nailer combined with a stapler, a crown stapler. So, we typically in our shop use it as a stapler only, and so, these are crown staples. They work really well for holding thin pieces of material on, like the backs of projects, thin plywood. And how you load this one is similar, except that you slide it, where we can do that, you can see, slide that across the back of the clip, push it all the way up in, and then lock it in. Same idea, hook it up, point it down, down, squeeze the trigger, and release. Okay, so those are staples and nails. Something that you're probably not going to use until you get up into the higher grades is something that we call a roofing nailer. So yeah, grade 10 maybe, but more likely grade 11, grade 12 is when you'll have the opportunity to use this. And this one has a little different style of nails in it. It's a coil type. So it wraps around and uh, here's one that comes right out of the box and that would feed into there. I'm not going to go through that but with you until it's time that you need to use it. Close it up. Now what I don't like about this and roofers love them because they're fast but it's got a bump fire method. So the bump fire method means that yes there's a safety on here. You notice I don't have that air hooked up. This is a safety on here but what you can do is that you just squeeze the trigger and then you push down, 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 down. And every time that you bump that, it fires a nail. Now that's nice and handy and quick on a roof. Um, we certainly don't want that with our brad nails or our um, bigger tools. This one is the only option that there was for it. And I mean, roofers rely on that speed or they would be forever up there. So you just gotta be super careful if you're doing that. Okay. I'm not gonna show you that one. Um, now next, this one is the framing nailer. This is a quite a big one. Um, shoots between two to three and a half inch. 
nails. You can get framing nailers to be a coil type or they can be just like this one, which has got an angled clip. So the nails come together on an angle and you just simply slide them in past, loaded. Now there was an option for a bump fire trigger that came with this. I removed that bump fire trigger and put on um, the safety trigger where you have to push down and then squeeze and that works a whole lot better. And it's a lot safer. So just to show you how this one works and the type of kick and danger that can be involved with one of these, once again pointing down, hook that up and push down hard and squeeze the trigger. There's a lot of kick to that. There's also a lot of power. Those ones have a lot more holding. Okay. Let's see if I can even. No, oh, I could. Okay, so that's how those framing nailers work. Next up. And the last thing that we're gonna talk about as far as tools go, this is the air blower. Same idea, this one you will use quite a bit not to blow dust off of your cell phone because that can be potentially dangerous, can cause debris to get into your eyes, other places you don't want. Um, huge safety concerns with these if somebody's horsing around. So respect what the machines can do, what the air power can do, and um, let's not test it. All right, so the gun is hooked up, the air blower, air gun, and it's simply for blowing dust off of your project is what we use it for. So maybe the odd time we'll use it for cleaning off the machines and where it's really hard to get at if you're working on something. And that's about it. You just squeeze the trigger and it shoots air out. Now we're talking about 110 pounds per square inch, what that means, or PSI. What's that? What that's the equivalent of is that if you had one square inch of space and you had somebody that was 110 pounds standing on that space, that's how much pressure is packed inside of that tank and that's what's coming out of this hose. Um, your lungs cannot take anywhere near that, so you never want to put this up to your mouth. Uh, heard of stories of people having really bad, awful accidents that uh, we never want to see that happen in our shop, so or to anybody. Now, just to quickly review, um, sometimes what happens too with these nails is that, with these nailers, is that they can jam. So if somebody puts the nailer, the nails in incorrectly, if, if this hasn't been maintained properly and have drops of oil added to it periodically, um, the nails can jam inside. It. So what will often happen is that you'll squeeze the trigger, put a nail in, and nothing comes out. So if nothing comes out, what you need to do is disconnect the air hose and check to see if you have any fasteners. Because a lot of times it just you realize, didn't realize that you ran out of fasteners. The other thing that you need to do is check then, is there a nail jammed in there? And if there is, in the case of a misfire, what I want you to do is just simply stop, not try to fire it again, and come get me the teacher and I'll, I'll check it out and, and check it over. Because if we keep misfire, if we keep firing and there's nails jammed in there or pieces jammed in there can cause damage to the tool and it can also cause debris to fly out, nails to fly out and hit somebody that we don't want. So we don't want that to happen. Um, another thing that we want to talk about is the length of our fastener. So uh, this one right here, this is a three inch framing nail, ringed framing nail. If we are nailing something that's three inches, my general rule is that uh, all of your body parts need to be a, away from where you, the nail is entering. So let's go with this one, two inch nail in there. And if I'm gonna nail this, you notice that my hands weren't anywhere near there. Why? Because you need to have your hands at least one and a half times the length of the nail away from it. So you might have a hard time doing the math on that one. Just keep your hands far away from the nail. Why one and a half times? Simply because Sometimes this will shoot out and it might go a little further. Maybe it hits a knot and comes out sideways. Maybe um, you have a lot of air pressure built up on your, on your tank and it 
goes a little farther than, um, than the, the length of the fastener. So it's best to leave a little bit of a tolerance for that. Okay. Lastly, um, I guess the biggest thing is you just need to make sure that you're being safe and that you're not forcing around. Air tools are awesome. They work really well and if you were to try to get a job in carpentry or woodworking or anything like that, mechanics, you're going to need to know how to use them. And even in your own home life, these can speed up things incredibly. So they're also lots of fun. So if you like to have fun with the machines, then please do so safely. Thank you.